Hey everyone, welcome to, I guess, sort of a year in review type episode for the Guile Treatment. Um, we have Tim Keefe with us. Uh, my voice is a little sketchy. Oh I'm man. Terribly sick uh, all week, so that's okay. You may, Maybe you'll hear less of me this week. Oh uh, man, I don't, know if, I don't know if the public can, uh, they may riot because of that, dude. I doubt it. They only watch the show um, for you and the guests. They don't like <laughs> me at all. They've said that to my face, so. There you go. We'll get extra Tim Keefe this week. Yeah, it's, everyone likes that. Yeah, everyone loves Tim Keefe. I think Tim Keefe's been the... I need to go back and see how many people... Uh, how many times we've had certain guests. But I think Tim's been on maybe the most. Next to Kevin, maybe? I think you guys have been on the most. Both uh, You may you may yeah. take the cake. Somewhere so. in the mix. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely in the top. So. Uh, the whole point of that... Uh, I guess we took like a couple, couple week break just because news was slow after the Reno PTC and... Now it was the holidays. It was the holidays like, and yeah. all that fun stuff. And I kind of kind of got the recording itch. I've been doing a bunch of other stuff like Versus Series. And we're doing deck profiles now. And I kind of want to get back into the gal treatment um, with the year ending. We're going to do a year in review of the cards we think were the most impactful over the year. And then at the end, uh, we'll, I actually went through the lists and tallied out the top like, 10, 13 cards that were actually played. Uh, that made top cuts. Um in no particular order, obviously, because I didn't really want to deal with that. Because yeah, uh, I'm tired and lazy, and my dog's sick. So and my garage door broke today. So yeah, go me. So, um, but yeah, so uh, we want to. St- it's uh, let's start off, I guess. So um, go ahead, Tim. You can if you want. If you, I don't know if you want to read your entire list or just go down like one, and we can all say or start at ten and go up. So yeah. you know. Yeah. Oh, we maybe we'll just like all throw out our list to start, and then sure. that way we don't like. Talk about, I, I suspect these lists are going to have at least like six or seven cards yeah. in common. Oh, yeah. A lot of overlap. Most likely. Yeah. Um, so I tried to think of this as sort of which cards had the most impact both on and off the table. Mm-hmm. So like some cards that really changed your deck building decisions or, or were really a factor in, in how you prepared for a tournament. Some other cards sort of just had really big in-game impacts mm-hmm. and Maybe didn't even post a lot of results, but are still a big deal. And there's a little bit of uh, picking some things just to call them out. Yep. Um, so I, I tried to put them in order. It, it It's sort of a lost exercise. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, three through ten, just because the, the first two are the only ones I would consider separate at all. Sure. Uh, Liu Kang, Quan Chi, of course. Um, Bang, overly dramatic. Hand cannon, certainly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I put uh, Fatality in here. I, I just call Big Shot one card. Sure, I did I did the same uh, thing. I did the same thing. Yeah, and, and the other one I put on, I put on Fei Fei. Um, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And brief honor mention to Graven Castle Ruins. It's, if it was an 11-card list, I'd put that in. Yeah, but, sure, uh, sure. Yeah, I didn't do really, like, any characters. Um, okay. You know, I sort of just thought, like, you know, if I start talking about characters, like, I mean, I could probably list 10 characters this year that were, like, hugely impactful um mm-hmm. i mean obviously the band ones spike one jet i mean honestly pretty much every character from bebop has at some point had like a pretty cr- i mean <clears throat> have they all won events uh and nine because and nine has an event and nine have not vicious has not yep. mm-hmm. okay they've tied I mean, vicious think, came yeah. in second at nationals like yeah, yeah. you know had multiple know. multiple tops okay but Ed Nine has also like had a couple, you know, good showings. So mm-hmm. okay, I had like the big ones for characters, just bang and stop. Um, Fatality as well, uh, Punch and Judy, overly dramatic, and then I had some like attacks that I think are sort of like set the bar for like attacks right now, which are just missile launcher, coffee samba, and mm-hmm. nutcracker, uh, mm-hmm. Cassie's. Mm-hmm. Um, that are just crazy numbers, like all value. You kind of just, if you're playing one of those symbols, like uh, Samba is a little bit less uh, just because of the one check. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's almost more of a deck than a card that you just put in. Mm-hmm. Although you see people that are just like, oh, you're running this, just put in Sambas. Yeah. Um, but because of the one check, like that definitely impacts how you think about building your list. Uh, Revoke as well, I think. I would expect that to be on uh, your guys' list as well. Yeah, That's just like, I don't know, that's a card right now that honestly makes me want to like 
<laughs> play those symbols. Uh, I mean, enhances, like there's so many incredibly strong enhances right now that just having an out, like even if it's only like four times a game mm. is huge. And then the one that, you know, I don't know if it was sort of at the end of the year, we talked about this. It's, it's an interesting sort of question um, because, you know, cards that were huge in, right, like February or March, like aren't necessarily huge in like, July or August and yeah. you know it might be different like now on you know just as sets come out as sort of like metas change uh, I think I'd put like Celestial Being you know when Twinkle was running around sure. like that was a card that I mean in some ways it was you either ran Twinkle or you ran, or you ran a character that could play Celestial Being yeah because you needed a way to get rid of momentum I don't think the Jetta quite has the same impact. Um, you know, I mean, he's obviously not so good that people are talking about, like, how am I going to dump all this momentum? At least not yet. I mean, there's been one event. I mm -hmm. don't think there was even a Jetta there. And if there was, I don't think he topped. No, he, he didn't um, top if there was. That was sort of, you know, there, I feel like there are a lot of cards, well, maybe not a lot, but there are definitely cards like that that are sort of like answers to things that kind of came and went depending on uh, how's the meta was. I mean, I know a card that I liked running a lot was for instance, something like Formidable Task, mm. which is sort of a card that does really well against a lot of those like fire and earth, basically all the jet stuff. Yeah. You know, jet stuff, evil samba, too. like, yeah. you know, all these cards that are, right, evil. I mean, yeah, uh, anyone running evil in, uh, these days? Nah. Just a few. People who want to run revoke. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I forgot to add in the, the actual top two on my list are Revoke One and Coffee Summit Two. So okay, I, sure. I, I didn't sure. complete. I'm not. I'm not crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, like tech cards are a little weird. Like I, I didn't, honestly didn't even think about um, Hand Cannon, yeah. but I mean that's a hugely impactful card as well. I mean, you that's, could even go as far you know, as saying Insect. You right. can almost go Insect Puppeteer it, as well. So yeah, I mean it deleted the deck that won Worlds. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's, that's yep. an impact. So. Yeah. Yep. 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 Um. Oh, I'll go on my, my, well, my list basically echoes a lot of what you guys said. Uh, Revoke's number one on my list. I had Twinkle on there as a group with the characters with Quan Chi. Uh, Spike 2, Jet was a big one. Uh, I had uh, Missile Launcher and Hand Cannon and Fatality as the attacks that I really liked. I, I tried, you know, and Bang, and Overly Dramatic, which was run over like 25 times in top, <laughs> top cut decks this year. So... Yeah. Um, but Punch and Judy, that card can go burn itself in a fire for all I care. I can't stand those things, man. But anywho, um, but yeah, it's kind of, for more all six checks. Yeah, um, it's it's kind of weird how I, I was going through all the lists and seeing link the the ebb and flow of like the meta and how things like the the celestial bean actually was still ran after Twinkle was banned just because of the stun hate it provided and the mm -hmm. and like the the stop yep. and the stop protection, I guess. If, yep. You weren't yep. running I mean, stop. Right. You, you were usually yeah, running celestial being to stop the stop that would end your turn. Um, yep. Shares a symbol with urban shower. Yep. Yeah, and uh, now with Jetta, that card should get some more play. I think just because all of his yeah. attacks I mean, are probably going to be reversed. That's just tough you know? because it's a four check. Oh yeah, for sure. You know? like, but that that's so much that's first real. So, like, that's first world death problems though, man. Death has so many four oh, checks. You so, know. Uh, honestly, you know? water does too. Yeah, water does too. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of neat, like seeing like how the how the year went on and overly. Like I said before the show started, like overly dramatic was just sprinkled into decks, and then all of a sudden it's just like these four X waves of overly dramatic because people finally realized that card's just n insane and stupid. Yeah, um, coffee coffee samba. Yeah, had a sim had a fun you know interesting story too. Yeah, I, I um, believe that was like a four dollar card when it first came out, and now yeah, it's like coffee oh, samba <laughs> when when it first hit it was. The card you're sad to open out yeah. of your bebop cat. Like, yeah. almost the only ultra rare besides Julia that when you open, you're like, oh, darn, I got a coffee something. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. darn, I got a cove. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's basically what it was. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then, you know, really in the beginning, it was, it made a splash in the Mad Pro deck, but mm. it was really, at that time, just a very narrow card, right? You basically yeah. only used it if you had a non-jet deck that yeah. really needed to stun the opponent deck to win. Sure. Mm -hmm. And then when Mortal Kombat brought all this desperation stuff yeah. is when it really started mm -hmm. to blow up mm -hmm. because it's like, oh, look, 
this card we we see proof is already good enough to justify its one check. Yeah, happens to fit amazingly in these desperation decks we want to build now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's how it's really. Picked up. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, I, I, if we did, if the, if this list, it's, let's say Mortal Kombat came out earlier, we would probably see Princess Perry in a lot of in a lot of these top cut lists. I, not maybe not maybe. as much as you know, Coffee Samba, but. It is a very impactful card in its own right, just because it's free to discard and attack when if you're in desperation. But, yeah. but you know. like you can imagine, if, if it's combat first and bebop second, mm. when coffee samba comes out, or well, let's I mean, put it this way: if 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 there were no big shots in bebop and yeah. that deck just wasn't a thing, when World Combat came out and people were building desperation decks, they probably would have looked at coffee samba and just been like, "Nah, that's too greedy. That can't." Be good. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's only because it had that prior success that, that sure. people were really mm -hmm. eager to try it out. Yep. Yeah. I sort of wonder, like, you know, you said, yeah, if, like, Mortal Kombat came out first. I mean, if Mortal Kombat came out first, do we even get Coffee Samba? <laughs> like, it's a possibility. You know, does, yeah, I mean, we certainly get, don't like, get hand cam. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that that's another thing, too. Like, with your success with Spike 2... And then it's just you see all these people building these spike decks and and then hand cannon and he just disappears off the face of the earth from you know like it, it's like it's like he got snapped by Thanos and it just doesn't exist anymore you know <laughs> yeah and it's sort of an interesting little experience I, I forget I think I said this on uh, the Rochester show. As we advance more and more into this territory where it's really, really hard to prepare for everything, mm -hmm. you know, the the initial reaction when you're going to play a deck at a major is you don't want to have any auto losses because you can you can run into anything and you don't want to run into that thing in top 16 and just be eliminated. It's hard enough to, to get through a top 16 as it is. Mm -hmm. Right. So it, I know like my first reaction, I'm pretty sure Garrett's the same way and a lot of players are like this. They, they don't want to play a deck that has auto losses. Mm. But if, if we reach a point where we start to feel like maybe that's inevitable, you know, beyond the, the like Heidi's of the world or whatever, then maybe you do just go ahead and play Spike too and just say like, all right, I'm going to lose to something. We'll yeah. lose to hand cannon. It's just you know yeah. beat everything else. Mm -hmm. I think this was really the is it I, like my prior experience with like UFS is is just from like Red Horizon one and up. So maybe Tim, you can answer this. Has act have actions always been like this heavily? important in a format as of like yes. as, as bang well, and revoke has always been honestly i think they used to be and then they weren't and now they are again i mean yeah because you hear about like the old like really the old players talk about like orange card blue card is how you win yeah okay and sure. it's, it's kind of the true again yeah, you know? yeah. <clears throat> like, in, in, in ye olden days it was absurd strength it was uh revitalize it was uh infiltrating um Rejection was the big one. Okay. Uh, broken arm, broken leg. Mm. Basically, actions that deleted attacks or reset life totals, happy holidays, just like dumb action cards that prolong the game for the most part. Okay. And absurd strength where you arbitrarily turn one somebody. Uh, okay. Yeah. So that, that's what that's what shuffle was supposed to be, but it ended up not being because of just because it's keyword well, it's just the I mean, it's just symbols and keywords. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, and I mean the game is different enough. I mean, absurd strength was able to go on throws at a time when, like, auto-throw blocks... Oh, didn't exist? I, I, I want to say they didn't exist. I, th there was one that was, like, on a... Th there was, like, a Protect Your Master 3-4 foundation kind of thing, I okay. think. But mm -hmm. it wasn't played, right? Mm -hmm. If someone threw a chain throw with three absurd strength, you're just like, okay, mm -hmm. I guess yeah. I'm at seven or something. <laughs> you got me. It's kind of how I feel against going against Will of Two sometimes. Well, you, you did 15 to me on turn one. I guess I'm losing this game. You know? You're just bad. Yeah, that happens. Yes, but but we don't need to talk about how bad I am. So um, yeah. Uh, so other than revoke, would you say bang would be the most influential action behind, or are we going to count fatality in, in, in as an action instead of an attack? I think bang's more influential than fatality anyway. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I thought that was that was, that was really high up in my list, and going into like the heavily most it was number two on the on the most played list in top cuts actually what um, was bang bang yeah behind revoke yeah those were yeah. Those were one and two and, yeah part of that's just because actions are universal and those particular actions are pretty splashable mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. you know you can't 
you, you're not probably not going to have a situation where you can't run bang or revoke because you really need to run this. Uh, if you really need to run some other action, you run it on top of bang and revoke. They're yes. just that good. And that was usually stop or prepare to fight. Uh, yeah. According to the list, which is kind of funny because like you'd have revoke main boarded with like a stop, but then you'd have like another set of stop. You not, I mean, you'd have like revoke and like a uh, bang kind of like splashed into the deck, but then you'd have the full, the rest of the set to swap yeah. out what you needed in your sideboard. That's what most, most people did, which was kind of funny. And then Fei Fei and overly dramatic and hunt uh, hunts. Another one that kind of man it, hunt wasn't oh, even on my list. Dude, <laughs> Like, uh, like Hunt That's, was... It, Hunt it's such was, an old card. It's, I know. It's, old, it's really weird because if you look at the beginning of the year, Hunt was just everywhere. And then we hit this point where the symbols start shifting a bit to where people aren't playing as many life decks. No one plays Chaos anyways. And then, you know, the death decks were still playing it. But, like, people just started shifting to, like, evil and water and good. And, you know, and even Order made a big showing this year, too. Uh, surprisingly, even though it's considered still... You know, one of the weakest spam foundation symbols in the game, but whatever. But uh, but yeah, but it's just weird seeing how the symbols just shifted, uh, the power cards, I should say, and, and just just kind of just went full circle. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, outward loyalty came out. Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, uh, people started to play loyal friend a little bit more. Yeah, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, other symbols found or started to play their foundation hate. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it was, it's not, you know, you need to be playing a hunt symbol to be able to yep. deal with opposing foundations. Yep. It was also kind of funny to see self-destruct being played really heavily at the beginning of the year. <laughs> and then it just dropped off the face of the earth. That was another one of those cards that is considered too slow for now, nowadays, self, I guess. Well, self-destruct is something we've talked about a bit. Here's the, the issue with self-destruct is nobody wants to go. You don't want to go second. Yeah. Like, that's a good way to lose. Mm. And so now you want to start the game over in the middle of the game and go second. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. I don't know. That just, it's like really hazardous. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of decks that will be, you know, it, it, unless you catch them with like a terrible hand, you know, obviously mm. if like they have like a, you know, if they have like five, you know, six hand or like five attacks yeah, and you like self-destruct, I mean, I guess then you just hope they don't, Say, well, I'm going to play these attacks and, you know, pass them. Just that was, that's just sort of a card that is a lot better when it's, like, a little bit slower. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's really easy to take a bunch of damage on turn two. Um, and, you know, sort of resetting your board. Like, you're kind of just saying that they're going to get a free shot at you. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. like, it's definitely not a recommended line of play. There was, yeah, self oh, self destruct is uh, is a card that takes advantage of decks that are not going to do a lot of damage to you on turn two. Okay. Yeah. And that is not a very large portion of the format right now. No. And it couldn't be as long as Liu Kang was around. It absolutely could not be. Oh, right? for sure. You, for sure. You had to be able to rate, even if you had good defenses against him. You had to be able to kill him first. Mm -hmm. So. And doesn't one of Air Max cards just straight up cancel a form? Uh, isn't no, that... that's um, what's his name, Raiden. Oh, it's, well, Vermeck has a the form cancel too. He has a form oh, cancel. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it's on it, it's on the one. It's like on okay. a two six or something or whatever. Yeah, it's just it's a form. That's yeah, not a good card that people should be playing. Yeah, it's it, 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 not too bad. Uh, also, uh, funny thing, how none of us had assets on our lists. Did anyone say Swordfish to you? No, I thought about it because that was have, that was that was the highest played asset this year was Swordfish Two, followed by Homemade Explosives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard to splice out. I mean, I think a lot of Anacarsis' success has to do with Swordfish Two. I guess Rob would know better. Mm -hmm. um, but and, I mean, a lot of Anacarsis' success, success has to do with Fatality and yeah, you know, yeah stuff. exactly. <laughs> In terms of like staying alive, yeah. yes. I mean, mm -hmm. Swordfish Two is very good. I mean, it basically just says block and attack. Yeah, I think I left so. off the list just because it hasn't really. It's been a thing that you run into in decks with Swordfish have done good. Mm -hmm. You know, aside from decks that are like you know Keith deck that's trying to loop it or whatever, yeah. it hasn't really like greatly changed deck building, save for like you play it if you can yeah. and sure. You know, opposing decks, it hasn't really convinced too many people to, like, main deck asset destruction or anything like that. It hasn't. It's yeah. just like, okay, make sure I don't get, you know, blown out by a swordfish. I've got Revoke, we're fine. Which leads us to being Revoke, probably the best card 
in the format in a way it, it possibly always has been yeah okay um, yeah sure as much as we all had it at the top of our list i feel like there's still not enough credit given to it generally like when people are looking on like what symbol do i want to build this character on they don't mm-hmm. think this symbol has revoke well the thing about it, revoke is like it's pretty easy to play it off symbol yeah you mm-hmm. know but, like i mean it, well it has to do with more of your attack lineup i guess um you know you, you right you want your attacks to at least have a good overlap so that if they have a strong defensive enhance you can still play attacks and cancel sure. it mm-hmm. um but like, I, and I guess like defensively, you're in the same boat if you have like if you blocked and then you can't play it anymore. I guess like a little bit of revoke. Like, I don't see a ton of like void decks right now. Um, you know, there were a few with like the Ed Nine. Um, but Tim you know, Molina. Yeah, I mean, maybe you could do some stuff. I mean, some of the Sub Zero things. Mm. Um, you know, like you might be able to do like a Void Satoshi or. I mean, I don't even really know like some of the more recent Void characters that came out. Um, uh, Kuma, but he's better off of Evil anyway. But, so. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, well, whatever. But he's running Revoke anyway. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes, yes. But yeah, I mean, Evil, like, there's all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, but like life, uh, one of the issues with life is I'm not totally sure how you kill people when you're playing life right now. Um, yeah. You know, it doesn't seem to really have that just like standout attack mm. that it doesn't have a missile have. launcher is what you're saying no it does not have a missile launcher yeah. uh, and i don't think it really has anything that's terribly close to missile launcher to be honest um i mean i guess you could say that a lot about a lot of symbols but um you know like obviously like spike two kind of had some stuff but he did that on his own you know mm-hmm. um i mean there's some debate what, what was better for spike two was it m3c or was it like pl- uh sword plasma, plasma cannon? cannon i think it was plasma cannon yeah but I mean, that card was just nuts. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, barring character-specific stuff like Spike 2 that, you know, currently happen to be vulnerable to Insect Cannon, um, I don't think life's killing people explosively. I do think the Morgan throws are very good. Mm-hmm. I think a life deck that leverages those has some potential. <laughs> um, certainly if it gets maybe one more attack that can let it turn on some sort of a gill support theme. You know, I, I think Dark Stalkers gave life a fair amount. Um, it's just, you know, that format hasn't matured yet and we're going to get yeah. another set before it does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, a life character or a character sort of in general that I think like could probably still do well that isn't getting played is Pharaoh Man. Um, <clears throat> I know, I know Tim uh, has some, I guess we'd call it recent success with Pharaoh Man. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I thought if, if he could turn on those Morrigan attacks i would be all about it yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right now that that's my one stopping point but yep. if, if there's enough stuff to make that work otherwise i, I have thought about it because uh, certainly especially if lilith gets big yeah yeah oh definitely for sure yeah, there's just like uh, there's a lot of things where i think that that like just like that you know minus one of the I mean, like you just look at vega you know you look at akuma just stuff like that like so that check hack like even that just like little bit just messes up a lot of numbers and you know some of the stuff of like playing actions during attacks like doing this other stuff like the fact that he can mess with all those um even like defensively like his stun's going to be a little bit better because if they have um whatever cassie's card is um yeah. sense of morals yeah like if that's a six plus instead of a five plus like okay like you're probably committing a foundation to ready a foundation anyway mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. like just stuff like that so now he's still pretty good. No, uh, Kuhn focused was also heavily played this year. It was in a bunch of lists mainly because people just didn't want to die to things because they were just too fast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that, that's kind of like the yeah. impact of Big Shot more than yeah. the impact of Kuhn yeah. focused. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah, that 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 that's honestly that's the truth. Yeah, uh, Big Shots actually well because only one Big Shot deck technically could. Did none it. of us put cats? Uh, no. No, none of us play cats. I mean, no. That, that kind of, I feel like that's looped in with Punch and Judy as well. Yeah, but, it can be. Um, yeah. It, I know that, uh, well, Punch and Judy were, like, outside of the Mad Perot deck and, what, the Dalsim and De- Jet deck that Omaha brought to Ve- to Vegas, it, outside of Mad Perot, it didn't make a showing. You know, it had uh, Metal Man had, yeah. a, had a deck in Omaha. Yeah. But, so here's the thing is... Uh, I mean, I guess to what, um, wasn't, wasn't Phil running it in his Satoshi deck? Mm, in, 
Or was he just on life attacking? So it might not no. have been. I thought no, it was. He, he was on fire attacking. I'll double check what you guys talk. I have the list. Yeah, the, that, um, so. I don't think Barrett had it at Worlds. I mean, the thing about Big Show, this is again the, the like yeah. Bebop meta versus Mortal Kombat meta. Big Shot was like the thing, one of the things in Bebop meta. Mm. It, was, it was Big Shot's yep. deck and Spike One. Mm-hmm. And we had a Big Shot deck Mir, right? We had, what was it, a top eight match or something? Or we, we could have. We we were in danger of having like a big shot mirror in finals if, if James didn't run into both of them. Yeah. Um and you know, we had someone make top sixteen just sandbagging the big shots deck. We had uh Jet Deck splashing big shots because it was an earth deck, but he's like, I'm gonna splash big shots, it's gonna make my deck better. Um and then when Mortal Kombat came out, it basically just because of fatality and because of Quan Chi for much of it. Uh, Phil had it in his deck at Rockford in his Satoshi deck. Okay. Yeah, you know, had okay. It. Yeah, it was yeah. like, you know, what is Big Shot's only real, the only Mortal Kombat deck that wanted to run Big Shot's was Fire Liu Kang, mm-hmm. um, which wound up being the less popular build, but was kind of more explosive, just yeah. less stable. Yeah, yeah I mean, um, it was definitely, like, I think we sort of said it's sort of like higher ceiling for sure, and, you know, probably like 10 times worse matchup than Squad Sheet. Yeah, the... Um, and so it's just like Quan Chi being a thing kind of like took the steam out of big shots. But then, I mean, Keenan showed up to US Nats with it, made top cuts, if mm-hmm. I recall. Mm-hmm. Um, he wound up losing to Jet, but that's hardly yeah. a knock on like, oh, big shots are bad now. They lost to a really good Jet deck. Yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, big shots, yeah, it's the same thing. Like, there was a lot of hate for big shots in Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even like the assets, like nobody ran. Like half of them were like, you can't play. You know, was it like this? The Quan Chi one was like, you can't, like oh, lose three yeah. or something. You can't play a card that's been played. Yep. Um, you know, hand cannon stops it as well. Even even um, fueling up was splashed and was put into decks because fueling up randomly stops it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Part and of the reason well, it was in my deck. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I mean, overly dramatic stops. Yeah, obviously. overly dramatic. Too, like, yeah. Yep. Um, I think it stops both of them. So that's just, I don't know. It's sort of one of those cards. Like, I don't even think Punch and Judy are like that good, but they're annoying. Mm -hmm. And it's super easy to just throw them in a deck. Yeah. And then, you know, if you're playing, like basically if you're playing against someone and they have like Punch and Judy's and it's like getting to turn like four or five or something, you basically have to go, okay, well, if he just randomly throws like plus twelve, plus twelve on something, like what am I going to do about it? Yeah, am uh, I going to be able to block it? I believe, am I going to die? I believe Tim has always said this that they have secret text that says grab a high block, grab a low block. I yeah. think, I think that, it's a Tim. Yeah, that, that actually really intrigues me about them going because <laughs> I think there, there's an extent to which I, I guess Akuma, notwithstanding Dark Stalkers, as a very uh, speedy set. Mm, mm-hmm. like there's a bunch of you know, stats make things faster. Yeah. And that that's one of the areas where punch and duty defensively might be of assistance. Yeah. Slow down and attack and then block it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I honestly can say I've never played them in a deck yet because I just, I refuse to play them because I hate them so much. But that's just me being spiteful. So, yeah. Yeah. The other thing is like the, the uh, all in order right now aren't, aside from like not having characters that flood their discard pile. Sure. Uh, sure. They're not, they're not super popular, <laughs> or at least when they are, it's it's not the kind of deck that, mm-hmm. that can afford to spend eight slots on. Extra sure, cards. yeah, yep. Uh, that was also one thing, too, we, we saw this year. With the, the advent of Punch and Judy, we were seeing 10-plus actions in decks now nowadays. Uh, especially, I don't know, I know the Mad Pro deck also would either run revoke or out of your league, and I think that usually the fire builds ran, if they weren't able to splash... Um, Revoke, they definitely just maimed out of your league on there. I know that. And we had 12. I know there were some decks with multiple actions and assets that were usually deemed, well, not good, not a good way to build your deck. But it worked well, for them. Yeah, you know? and that's, that's deadlock too, right? Mm, because sure. you're not going to be as punished as much. You, you're not going to have this problem where they're going to, 18 to 12 you on foundation count because you're running too many actions. Yeah. You might have a few turns where you're, you know, you're going to have a turn where you're down like eight, six or something maybe, mm-hmm. but that's not, yeah. You know, it, it's a little bit of old wisdom of trying to 
think about those those big board area differences late in the game. Um, mm. If your deck has strong deadlock, then you don't need to worry about that as much, right? Sure. If you've got yep. if you're overly dramatic missile launcher, it's like well, yeah, yep. okay. Oh yeah, definitely. I remember getting missile launcher, stun whatever, and powerful the billion, <laughs> and then punching Judy <laughs> on top of it. Yeah, it was not. Yeah, okay. That's a, I'm gonna have flashbacks now, kids. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Um, also, I want to kind of talk about um, some cards that have that have risen in play. Uh, Stop securing his destiny. I believe demanding submission saw a big bump. A lot of the Street Fighter tech cards this year, uh, as much of a, a, a knock that Street Fighter gets for being a uh, set, it actually has a lot of good pieces now that are really relevant nowadays. Like those, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I wasn't paying a great ton of attention to. Did like securing not see play when before Bebop? Because there was only like that's only like an eight month span, right? No, it, I mean it, it saw some. It saw some, but not as much as it does now. Since like every attack has a million amazing enhances now. Like coffee samba exists. Yeah, coffee samba, and then even even demanding can. I mean, even how about yeah. Princess Perry? Princess, yeah. Oh yeah, yep, definitely. Yep. Um, <clears throat> like I mean, refuse, part of the part of the issue for that honestly is the symbols. Um, sure. You know, air and order aren't going to play that a whole lot. I don't think so. It's really death, uh, and it's you know, and it's a two four. So <coughs> that was seeing less. I think. Uh, I think Bison's is at least a five check. No, um, it's a two four non no, block two. Uh, yeah, and that has um, worse symbols actually. Uh, well, at the time it had worse symbols, but yeah. Now death and evil but are very good. That yeah. one's that one's pretty decent too. Mm -hmm. Um, just obviously right because it burns them as well. Yeah. Um, and on, so part of it too, I think, is going to be the fact that they like destroy or remove as well. Um, because sort of to piggyback off what Tim was saying, with Deadlock, in some ways, like a foundation that's like a good negation piece that destroys itself yep. is maybe more valuable than one that flips. Mm. Um, unless you have a way, basically, unless you have a way to like clear those out afterwards, you know, I mean, right. If you're like somebody like Chun-Li or you have like attacks or you other could, foundations that let you like blow stuff up. Yeah. You could be running um, cyber link. Once, once a, you have something order. face down in your staging yours. area, like it's pretty much just a card that is going to help you with a check here and yeah. there. And it's other words, just like absolute dead weight that. You know, like if you're really scared of going going to like eleven or twelve foundations. Yeah, to piggyback so. on that real quick, I took my current Akuma deck <laughs> just gets tons of face downs, and so I've been trying to figure out a way to get rid of those as using more value. So I'm probably going to end up slotting in some double crossers into the deck just so I can stay out of deadlock because evil, for as great as a symbol it is, it has some decent options for deadlock, but it's not as powerful as say missile launcher or woodman's leaf shield or overly dramatic or what stuff like that, you know? Um, so yeah, well, sorry, sorry to hijack your, no, your, your comment there, but, um, but yeah, uh, it's kind of, it's going to be neat to see going forward. Uh, how, I guess we have maybe one more event with this set before a new set comes out. Because we don't know because they, they're... Maybe. It depends on... I don't know if it's California or... Well, it's, it's not going to be Chica Chicago. Chicago. Will, I think Chicago Black will be the first event if it... Because it comes out the week... Technically, it's supposed to come out the week before the Chicago event, which is the Santa... Which means there's a pre-release before that, so all the yeah. cards... Yeah. yeah. Be even then, ahead of time. It'll, it'll be interesting if it's going to be more... Like, if people are even going to be really building the new stuff yeah. yet, or if it's more just going to be that you won't have any access to, like, the Darkstalkers Tins cards. So Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, like, there might be new stuff mm -hmm. if there's anything that's, like, really obvious, but yeah. otherwise it might just be, like, yeah, really unpolished yeah. lists. So. Yeah, it just depends if anything takes, you know, if there's a deck that, if there's, like, a spike two where you just need his right. Ultra Rares, then that won't show up. Yeah. But if there's, um, I'm sure there are decks, there, there are going to be characters that don't necessarily need ultra rares to yeah good. for sure Kens or whatever yeah. yeah even even like an akuma list doesn't he he doesn't really need his ultra rare the two check but he can run it if he wants yeah. i yeah. guess I mean, yeah there's a lot of difference of opinion on that card when yeah. i first saw it i was like why aren't you just playing sadistic ways and then mm -hmm. you were like oh no this lets you i mean we just talked about how good revoke is right yeah so, yeah yeah it's, it's not an offense mm-hmm yeah uh, anything else for the remainder of, for this topic before we move on to anything else? Because I think we maybe we know 
We know Revoke's great, Bang's great, Overly Dramatic's great. Uh, uh, you had some and, stats, right? You had a, yeah. Well, I don't. I, I, I have. I have a list of the top thirteen played um, of played cards from top cuts this year. Uh, so what is this? Is this back to like January? This is go. This is the entire year. Yes. Okay. Um, so lots of bebop cards. All right. Actually, you'd, you'd be surprised. Um, well, like yeah. tell me. Okay. So number one was Revoke. <laughs> Uh, number one okay. was revoked by far. Bang was number two. So I guess there are a lot of Bebop cards. Sorry, Rob. But yeah, uh, Fei Fei was the highest played foundation, followed by Hunt. Um, Swordfish 2, Stop. Prepared to Fight was played in 2018, kids. Do not let people tell you otherwise. It was played in the beginning half of the year. Uh, are these just instances or these counts? These are these are just one instance in a okay. deck. I didn't want to do ones and fours. And this also so, included sideboards. So if someone had one slotted into a sideboard, I also counted it because it was an instance sure. of the card. Uh, cool and Focus and Ophidiophobia round out top ten. Uh, there were, there was Refusing to Let Go, Out of Your League, and Fatality as like the next, uh, and all kind of tied with a bunch of other cards. Those were the more important ones, I thought, so... Videophobia. Yeah, it was run yeah. heavily. It was run in the beginning part of the year. Yeah, and there's some evil decks that were still running it during the summer of Mortal Kombat. I mean, I made a joke today about like you know who's running a Videophobia in 2018, yeah. and I was like you know besides me, but <laughs> that was that yeah. was one deck, and Mortal Kombat wasn't out yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of nuts. It was kind of weird seeing how things kind of just went. <laughs> Well, we don't need these anymore, and things got kicked out, and well, new things got put yeah, in. Yeah, I mean, it's just think about how unpopular era has been outside of Jackie. Yeah, and I mean, I guess I guess that's probably a lot of the count there. Because mm. um, uh, she can't guarantee her block zone, so it makes yeah. a lot of sense. In uh, Jackie. Journey West got a lot of play too in the beginning part of the year, which is kind of odd. Like a lot of the Fade decks, Fade had it. Uh, I think there was there was this really. There's, that was that was a deck for a hot minute. There was this really weird Felicia deck that ran it with, for some random reason. So. I don't know. Templar was like played a lot too, uh, but that was more of the Anacharis type decks. I feel um, like we'll be seeing more Templar. Yeah, I think so too. Fine, so. I run Journey West. Uh, not. In, I don't know. I don't remember if we ran it in yours or not. It, it sounded like you were making a bad. Yeah, game. I know. <laughs> Is this a shot? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not a shot. No, no. Um, but yeah, it was kind of neat to see how things kind of just you know you can see the the, desi the I guess the design power of the cards just kick out older cards. That it just they just do more, so there's no point to play these older cards that don't do as much. Um, yeah, I was yeah. just thinking like even with Jackie, and you, you figure a lot of evil decks were going one check land, mm. so they're probably not running it. And yeah. then water wasn't played that much. It's just a surprise to see. Mm -hmm. water, water well, I, I guess it's an easy like one to two X or a sideboard card. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was running it as two yeah. in. Uh, in wherever it was, Indianapolis. Surprisingly, Graven Castle Ruins didn't get ran as much as I thought it did. I thought I got ran a lot more than it really did, but it must just because it was just, it was it all had a big impact. Yeah, like like the decks that ran it were like they sort of jumped out. You're like, oh my god, you yeah. know, because they ran Graven Castle like that was sort of like their win condition. Yeah, exactly. So, yep. um, Unless um, they ran into a deck that needed to flood their card pool just as much as I did. That's right. Yeah, it, Looking at you, Mark Wisniewski. Looking at you, it, kid. It, yeah, it had a, uh, a very distinct place on the I need to be ready for this list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For, mm -hmm. for a good while. Yep. And that, that I wonder if Liu Kang made that disappear or if stuff like Hand Cannon made that disappear. As in, like, can it come back at this stage? Uh, I think it could Dark probably. Tower, I, something to think about. I think it could come back. I think it could, because uh, like I mean, Dark Chirito is like a new thing at, too. Uh, and I mean, I ran it at Nats and it won me games. Mm -hmm. Like you know, I, I actually don't think I saw that many hand. I, did I see any hand cannon decks? I don't know. Um, because primarily at Nats weren't just the hand cannon decks just Jackie to begin with. And yeah, it was it was going to be Quan Chi, right? Yeah, and then it was, it, yeah. was going to be Quan Chi and Jackie, and then it was just Jackie. Yeah, yeah. Hand, hand cannon is going to be interesting going forward because I. At some point, you can't just like refuse to run cards that have problems with it because mm, yeah. it's it as big and almost impossible to stop as it is. You're not going to see it that that much. I think yeah. you just don't want a deck that crumbles. 
Yeah. Like, as long as your deck can still play through it, you're probably mm-hmm. fine. Mm-hmm. And honestly, in some ways, it, it, like, unless they have, like, unless they're running, like, Insect Puppeteer or something like that, it's yeah, one of those cards where it's, like, it's only as impactful as, like, you know, basically it's, like, as, like, uh, stop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's something mm-hmm. that, like, may, you know, probably buys you a turn. Yeah. And that's fine, you know? And even, honestly, even if they can, like, clog up their pool with it, like, <clears throat> I mean, if you, yeah, like you're going to want to be able to like chip away around it. Like, so as long as your entire deck isn't Isn't built around like looping something or recursion, like you're going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure not Takeda. Yeah. Or Takeda. (laughs) Oh, poor Takeda. (laughs) Hey man, I lost a Takeda deck on Friday. Trent's Takeda deck just murdered me. It was that, that, the, he got that fire Ken card. Oh yeah. Do he stack an attack now? So he stacked a a whip assault and he double whip assaulted on a whip assault and I was just like sweet I'm dead so yeah I was oh, like yeah, yeah Takeda it's, it's one like, of those things where I I imagine there's a Takeda deck that, that looks really good in you know 80 or 90 percent of his matches yeah. and it, it's just if your goal is to win four rounds in the top 16 back to back you can't have yeah I'm sure big big problems yeah because he kind of just crumbles to revoke so yeah oh or, that's another one yeah it's a problem too yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we're gonna we'll go ahead and end the episode. Tim, thanks for joining us. Uh, uh, as always, uh, we're gonna make sure you're on the show more so you can be the overall winner next this coming year of the Guile Treatment uh, Guest uh, Award. I guess that we may have, may not have. I don't know. We don't have an award show yet. We're not that cool. I, so. I, I, I would not describe that as a goal of mine, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. But anyway, everyone have a good night. Uh, we'll talk to you all later. Uh, see you next time on the Guile Treatment.